Good morning. Welcome to Faith Life Harrogate. Awesome. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and we will be glad. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want us to just lift up our voices and just magnify the living God. Oh, just begin to worship him. Let's begin to magnify the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's begin to worship him. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Begin to magnify him. Begin to worship him. Worship him in the beauty of holiness. Father, we thank you. Father, we worship you. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor. Thank you, Father, that there's no God like you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm just going to read um, Psalm 69, verse 30. And the psalmist says, I will praise the name of God. How many of you are ready to praise the name of God this morning? Hallelujah. Glory to God. It says, I will praise the name of the Lord. And what are we going to do with that? How are we going to do that? It says, with a song. And we're going to sing songs this morning to praise the name of our God. Hallelujah. And he continues on and says, and I will magnify him with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. We're going to magnify him. So I want you to magnify him this morning with thanksgiving. Begin to magnify him. Begin to thank him for his goodness. Thank him for his faithfulness. Thank him for his gracious. He's, he's faithful. Oh, he's faithful to the end. He is faithful to the end. Begin to magnify him for his faithfulness. Begin to glorify him because he's a good, good father. Begin to worship him. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is the Ancient of Days. He is the Great and Mighty One. He is the Lion of the Tribe of Judah. He is the Ransom, O oh Father. Oh, we thank you for the Lion. He is the Lion of the Lamb. He is the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, we magnify you. Magnify him with thanksgiving. Begin to magnify him. Oh, yes, my soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit praises his name. Let's begin to magnify him this morning. I want you to give him thanksgiving. Magnify him. Because when we magnify him, he inhabits the praises of his people. He comes in our midst. Also begin to magnify him. Begin to worship him. Because our God is worthy of praise. Oh, the one who sits on the circle of the earth. He is worthy of our praises this morning. He is worthy of our praises. He is worthy of our praises. Oh, he's worthy. Oh, so begin to magnify him. Begin to worship him. Lift him up. Lift up the name of Jesus. Oh, we lift up the name of Jesus this morning. We lift him up. We lift him up. We lift him higher. We lift him high. Oh, begin to magnify him. Oh, we thank you, Lord, for your presence already. We thank you for your spirit in this place. We magnify you. Oh, we magnify you. Oh, we magnify you with thanksgiving. Oh, we are thanking you for your goodness. We thank Thank you for translating us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of your dear son. Oh, we thank you, Father. We thank you for saving our souls. We thank you, Lord, for the captives that are going to be set free this morning. We thank you, Lord, for, ye for yokes that are going to be taken off, annihilated this morning. Oh, we thank you, Lord. The yoke is broken because of the anointing. Because of the anointing. Jesus, the anointed one and his anointing that lives on the inside of us, oh God. We thank you. Father, we magnify you in this place. We magnify you with thanksgiving. We thank you because there's no God like Jehovah. Oh, there's no God like Jehovah. There is no God like Jehovah. So, Father, we thank you. There is no God like you. We magnify. You are worthy. Worthy is the Lamb. Oh, he's holy. Oh, he's holy. Hallelujah. Thank you, precious Father. We give you all glory because you are worthy of all honor. Thank you, precious Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone in the house said a big amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, let's have some time of worship. Amen. Begin to worship him. Begin to worship him. He's a living hope. He's my living hope. Begin to magnify him. Begin to worship him in this place. Begin to glorify Jesus. The, the grave has no claim. It has no claim on us. Glory to God. Oh, we are free. We have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Oh, begin to magnify him. Glory the, the grave has no claim it has no claim in the name of Jesus Jesus has set us free Jesus hallelujah father we glorify your name we magnify you thank you Jesus 
Hallelujah. Glorify him. Begin to magnify him. Magnify him. Jesus is our victory. Thanks be to God who has given us the victory in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. Father, we thank you. Oh, we bless you. Oh, we magnify you. Oh, we glorify you. Oh, the grave has no claim. No claim in the name of Jesus. Oh, thanks be unto God who has given us the victory in Christ Jesus. Oh, we magnify him. Oh, we glorify you. Oh, we worship you, Heavenly Father. Oh, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we magnify you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we glorify you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Lord Jesus. We glorify you. We magnify you. Thank you, precious Father. There is no God like you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We worship you in this place. Oh, you inhabit the praises of your people. Oh, begin to magnify him. Oh, his presence is here. Oh, his pre bondages have been broken off this morning. Oh, chains have been broken off because the presence of the living God. Reach out to him this morning. Reach out to him this morning. Oh, look unto Jesus this morning. Look unto Jesus this morning. As you behold him, as you behold him, oh, begin to behold him as you behold him oh you become like him glory to God begin to behold him begin to worship him lift him up lift him up lift up the king of kings lift up the lord of lords lift up the alpha and omega lift up the bishop of our soul lift him up lift him up exalt him oh exalt him Oh, exalt him. Oh, we magnify you, Jesus. We magnify you, Jesus. There is no God like Jehovah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While we're in this place, I just want to call on Dr. Kanwa. If you have a word to share, please. I just hear that. Yes, if you have a word to share, just share that with us. Glory to God. God, I send that. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You know, that, um, <laughs> they put me on the spot this morning, praise God. I was reading um, in Acts 2 yesterday, and you know, we just finished singing hallelujah for the one who set us free. Death has lost its grip on me, and Acts 2 verse 24, Peter is preaching in Acts. You know what happened? In Acts 2, if you know the story of how the church was birthed, when Acts 2, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, and then they got filled with the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues, and Peter comes out to start preaching, and this is the verse that jumped out of to me. Verse 24 says, God raised him up, ending the pains of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by death. It was not possible. Jesus said to Pilate, you're not the one killing me. I am laying down my life and I will pick it back up again. It was not possible. That phrase just, God raised him up because it was not possible for death to, like death would tried. He tried. He could not be held. I just imagine him and death is like, you know, on the floor, right? so dragging his feet, you know, come back. And Jesus is like, nah. Just walked out of that grave. Hallelujah. And that is the life we have. He's given us a life where it is not possible for death to hold us. So whatever is connected to death, the sin, the shame, the bondage, it is not possible. So when we're saying strong and free. That is what that is. Where the life we have been given because we are belonging to Christ makes it impossible for us to be held. So we are free, but we are so strong. They can't. So when you think about it, you cannot be held. So we walk free. We walk bold. We walk confident because the one that rose up from the dead and gave us that same life that makes it impossible. And so we are strong and free because of the resurrection life Amen. that we have received Amen. from our Lord Jesus Christ. So we praise you, Jesus, this morning. We give you praise. We praise you for...
for the freedom that we walk in. We praise you for the victory that we walk in. We praise you for the strength that we walk in because it is what you did that made this possible. And so Jesus, Savior of our lives, we acknowledge and adore and appreciate you today. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Praise God. Well, good morning, church. Hallelujah. Welcome to Faith Life Harrogate. This is the place to be on a Sunday morning. Amen. Uh, can, can I just ask you to please rise up again? Yes. Amen. And just go around and welcome somebody to church. Just give somebody a high five or a fist bump or something. You know, just welcome somebody to church. Glory. We have a full house. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Good morning. Morning. <laughs> Welcome to Faith Life Harrogate. We are one church in multiple locations. Oh, we are in Manchester, we're in Preston, and we're in Harrogate. And we just want to welcome those of you who are joining us online, who are watching us online on our different uh, social media platforms. Um, we just want to say thank you so much for taking the time to do that. And we hope that one of these days, uh, you will definitely pay a visit to one of our local um, uh, assemblies, and you will definitely be blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. This is the place to be on a Sunday morning. Amen. Oh, what an awesome time of worship. Magnifying the Lord with thanksgiving. And thank you so much to Dr. Uh, Dr. Kanwa for bringing that word for us. Amen. From our Manchester branch. Let's give it up for Dr. Kanwa. Thank you so much for, you know, um, visiting us this morning. And also, I want to take this time to actually welcome those of you who are worshiping with us for the first time. How many of you are worshiping with us? Ooh, praise God. Let's give him a round of applause. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Um, we have got a new here card. We just want to say thank you so much for taking the time to join us in Faith Life, uh, Harrogate. It's such a pleasure to have you. And uh, what we'll encourage you to do, if we've got a, a new here card, if you could please complete that, uh, what we're going to do is we will actually give you a welcome pack, which includes um, what our pastor, Pastor uh, Joel uh, Toller's Strength and Devotional. Um, so it, that's awesome. Um, it's a 52-week devotional, and we've been doing that for the past few weeks, and it's been awesome. So you have the privilege of having that this morning, so please complete that. Awesome. And um, once you've completed it, if you could please take it to the Connect Desk at the end of the service, and then one of our, um, one of our team members. Yes, thank you so much. I, I, I'm so glad you're next to me. Okay, so one of our team members will actually hand you a welcome pack for you to take away with you. Thank you so much for doing that. Okay, awesome. And I just also want to um, welcome um, also for those of you who are in Faith, um, Faith Life Harrogate and maybe you wanna, you're thinking of, oh my goodness, I just love, you know, I just want to serve. I just want to do something. We are looking for, we, you know, we're so glad to have you on board. Um, so we've got the um, Get Involved card, so if you just have a sense um, that you want to, there's something you want to do, that probably the Lord is tugging on your heart, whether to do worship, I know um, somebody's giving me a sign at the back, or playing the guitar, you know, sign languages at the back, amen. <laughs> or you want to work with the children's ministry or hospitality, um, there's so much to do um, in church here. So if you can complete this, even Anna wants to help at the sound desk, right? Amen. So please complete this with your name and email address, and also hand it um, to uh, Jocelyn, who is actually at the Connect Desk, and um, we will be in contact with you as well. Amen. Also, just to, uh, um, some announcements as well. We do have our Faith Life Prayer every Tuesday um, online on Facebook. So if you're on Facebook, you can connect with us online. We have that 6 a.m. on Tuesday morning, and then on Wednesday and Thursday, it's 8 o'clock in the evening, and then on Friday is 6 a.m. in the morning as well. So powerful, powerful sessions. Um, so please join us online, um, and you'd be so glad you did. Also, uh, for Faith Life um, Harrogate, we do have our Tuesday Bible studies. It's been awesome. You know, we do have some, you know, uh, 7.30 to uh, 9 o'clock every Tuesday. It's open to everyone, so you can actually join us online. Um, actually, Zoom. Thank you. So it's on Zoom. So um, if you want the um, link, just see us at the end of the service, and then we'll send that to you and get you connected, and we'll have a great time connecting and growing in the Word together. Amen. So just a few um, housekeeping arrangements. So can we just have, I know we've got our, ki um, our children's session at the back. We've actually got two um, um, groups. So our uh, children, at the, just give me a wave. To, uh, yeah. 
Woo! Amen. They're having fun already. Okay, so we do have two sessions. So, but also, parents, could you make sure that you do keep your children with you um, at the end of the service? So, uh, without further ado, I'm going to welcome Pastor Benny to give us the word this morning. Wow. Glory to God. Amen. Isn't God good? Jesus indeed is our living hope. Amen. Woo! <laughs> It's good to be excited in the house of God, isn't it? Amen. Because we are, whenever we gather, God is there with us, isn't it? He said, we are two or three gather in my name. There I am in the midst of them. Amen. 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 I want you to say to yourself, I am an overcomer. Am an overcomer. Say to the person next to you, you are an overcomer. Amen. Amen. Why? Because he has made us overcomers. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. For whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even what? Our faith. Amen. Glory to God. Our faith in Jesus helps us to overcome the world. And isn't God awesome? This morning, and God said to me that Dr. Kamwa has something to share with us. <laughs> Amen. And my wife picked it in spirit and asked her to come and share. And I want to read that scripture again. Awesome. As of Apostle chapter 2, verse 24. Glory to God. And he reads, whom is talking about Jesus, whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he would be held by it. Glory to God. No surprise that Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. Amen. And Paul writing to the Romans Christians, see Romans, uh, I think, 15, 29. He said that when I come, say that with me, when I come, I will come in the fullness of the blessings of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Woo! This is a place to be happy. Amen? When I come, I will come in the fullness of the blessings and the salvation that me and you have in the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God. And what a, a way to start us off this morning. By that wonderful scripture that our, our sister shared with us. Amen. My son picked up this phrase. And he always says it. He said that what God cannot do does not exist. Amen. So I don't know what the problem might be this morning. Or what the challenge may be this morning. I declare that it bows down at the name of Jesus. Amen. Everything that can be shaken is being shaken. But the word of God can never be shaken. Amen. That's why prophet Isaiah said that the grass withers, and the flowers fade, but the word of our God stands sure forever, stands strong, amen? So we thank God for our pastors, our senior pastors, Pastor Joe and Pastor Avi, and our senior pastor, he's ministering in India as we speak, amen? So we lift him up and pray that God will strengthen him and make every of his meetings remarkable, 
signs and wonders and miracles hap happening in every in, uh, uh, meeting that he's holding in India. And the same thing will happen here in Jesus' name. Because we serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of miracles, signs, and wonders. And as Pastor Linda has said, we are Faith Life Center Ministries. Uh, one church in multiple locations. Amen. So as we speak, we are meeting in Manchester, we are meeting in Preston, and we are meeting here in Harrogate. And I believe that God has a good word for us this morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So our pastors have been gracious and God has spoken to them and they've written this um, strengthening devotional. And uh, we are in week 12 and we'll go through it, um, you know, this morning because I was late to do that. But before I, before I do that, I just want to remind us that in, uh, in the first three months we've been discussing, learning, and growing in the five areas. Amen? As born-again Christians, five areas we should have faith in in order for us to experience the power of God, in order to experience the life that Jesus promised us, doesn't he? He said that I have come that you might have life and have it in his what? Fullness. Amen. So the first area that we look at that we should have faith in is what? Faith in what? In God. Amen. Say that with me, faith in God. Because that's what Jesus said to us, isn't it? And you know, Jesus is our perfect example. And he had faith in God, didn't he? He said, have faith in God in Mark 11, 22. Have faith in God. Why? Because faith in God changes everything. It makes us confident. It makes us fearless. It makes us powerful. Yeah, it makes the demons and the power of darkness to run from us. Amen? It makes us what? Strong and free. Amen? That's the word that the Lord has spoken over us this year. That we are what? Strong and free. So second, a second area we should have faith in is what? Faith in the name. Amen? Say that with me. Faith in the name. Because God has given him a name that is above every other name. That at that name, every knee shall bow. Of things on earth and things in heaven. Amen? And the Bible tells us that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Where me and you, the righteous, has run into and we are what? Saved. Amen. And another area to have faith in is faith in the what? In the blood. Amen. The blood of Jesus is powerful. Glorious power of the blood of Jesus. The Bible tells us that we overcome the enemy. We overcome the world. We overcome evil by what? Blood of the Lamb. Amen. By the word of our testimony. That we are the head and not the tail. Above only and not beneath. Overcome us in this life. We are prospering on every area. Amen. Whatever we touch our hands upon is blessed. Glory to God. That's our testimony. Amen? And we overcome him also by not loving our life to the, to the, end, to, to the end. Amen? To death. What that means is that we be consistent. We be faithful in what we believe. Amen? We are not ashamed of the gospel. We weary the enemy. Yeah? We weary the enemy's resistance by what? By our consistency. Amen? Standing on the word of God that cannot change. Amen? And another area we should have faith in is in the word of God. Amen? Glory to God. The word of God is powerful. Amen? The word of God changes everything. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And when we hear the word of God, and we act on it. Miracles happen. Amen. The things that seems impossible becomes possible. Amen. And the fifth area we should have faith in is faith in the power of God. And that's the, the current series we, we, we've been looking at. And we're on the third week of it this week. Amen. Glory to God. The Lord is good. 
and all the time. So we are in week 12 of the Strengthening Devotional. Amen. Glory to God. In week 5 of, uh, of having faith in God, we look at that the gospel is the full, is, is the full, is the full, is, sorry, the gospel is full of God's power. Amen. Say that with me. The gospel is full of God's power. Amen. What does that mean? The power, the power of God for salvation is found, what? In the gospel. And we concluded that salvation can never be found elsewhere except in Christ Jesus. Amen. Except in the gospel of Christ. And then last week, Pastor Linda spoke that we, that we have what? The good news because of the anointing. Praise God. Say that. We have the good news because of the anointing. What does that mean? The good news is the fullness of our blessing and salvation in the gospel of Christ. As I already mentioned. Praise God. She reminded us that Jesus is the anointed one that removes burden and breaks every yoke. Glory to God. Amen. The anointing which is our Lord Jesus Christ, is that one that removes burden. He breaks every yoke. Jesus is the body remo removing yoke, what? Power of God. Amen? Jesus is what? Body removing, yoke destroying, power of God. Amen. So our, our topic today is jump when prompted. Amen. Glory to God. You will find that on page 47 of our uh, um, Strengthening Devotional. Amen. Say that with me. Jump when prompted. Amen. Glory to God. That's why we're here today. In 2005, you know, we had God and said to us, our time in London is up. Move to Harrogate. We knew nobody in Harrogate. We didn't even know that Harrogate existed. Yeah? Because the first time we had it, we thought that it was Harringer in London. <laughs> Glory to God. But we thank God we jumped when he prompted us to move. And we are here now for 18 years. Amen? You are here also in this room. And myself and Pastor Linda being the pastors of this church. Because in 2020, we heard your time in the place you were worshiping is over. We want you to move somewhere else. But, we did, but it didn't tell us where. So we keep on praying and listening to him. And then when we... We went to a few churches, to Kitley, to churches here, and then church in Manchester, without knowing that God was going to plant a branch of that church here. But when he told us, I want you to continue going to Manchester, it didn't make sense. Because you know, that time there was a restriction. How far you can travel? But God says, start going to Manchester. For those of you who don't know Manchester, it's about an hour and a half. Go an hour and a half, come. So three hours. Why there are churches within five minutes here? But as, as we start doing that, what happened? And all of a sudden, we start have, having the prompting inside that what is happening in Manchester, if God wants it in, in Harrogate, we'll say yes. A few months later, our pastors, they invited us to their home after church. And they began to ask us, have you ever thought about being pastors? And we said, we've never, because we have our own ministry. But in last month, before they invited us, we start having this feeling. And they said to us, God, God wanted us to plant a church in Harrogate. Amen. 
and we say yes. And that's why we're here. Amen? And I know you have many testimonies like that. Amen? And I want you to pay attention as God speaks to us this morning. Whatever prompting that is prompted in our spirit, as we obey it, we will receive amazing uh, result and many lives will be changed in Jesus name glory to God amen so I want us to look at this um, jump before jump when prompted I just I, I'm just being led to read the whole thing but I want you to listen so that well, I'll be able to convey the heart of our pastors when they pen this jump when prompted I, uh, the test is uh, Matthew 17, 20. I say to you, if you have faith as Moses said, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Faith is about pleasing God, as we can see in Hebrews 11 6 not just obtaining and receiving things for yourself faith is hearing God tells you faith is hearing God tell you to step out and being obedient to his voice to step out when you heed the prompting of God's spirit and step out in obedience even when there is nothing supporting you but what God has said, you are well pleasing to God. Amen? The same Matthew 17, verse 20, Amplified Version says this. Jesus answered, because of your little faith, your lack of trust and confidence in the power of God, for I assure you, I most solemnly say to you, if you have living faith, the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there. And if it is God's will, it will move. And nothing will be impossible for you. Amen. Glory to God. So I speak to you this morning. Nothing that God has asked you to do, that you obey to do, nothing can stop it. Amen. Jesus told them, if you have living, active, alive faith, you would say, your words release in faith. Make a draw on the power of God. Amen? Glory to God. If you have your um, strengthened devotion, it's on for, uh, page 48. Baby locusts have the ability and power in their legs to jump 200 times their height. At that height, they will fly for only two to five seconds. They have learned to wait for the perfect condition. The perfect, the perfect wind that is blowing at a speed of two miles per hour. And once they get their wings out and catch the wind, these little guys can fly for miles. It isn't that they have the strength within and of themselves to do it. They just timed their jump perfectly. I mean, say, say to yourself, I will time my jump perfectly. Say to the person next to you, time your jump perfectly. Amen. With a little bit of effort, they jump up into the wind. And it is the wind that takes them much further than they could ever go in their own strength. You may be thinking, hmm, amen. 
you may be thinking, but I have only, but I have only got baby locusts, mustard seed side thing. But if you would start using the little thing you think you have, and be sensitive to God's perfect timing, you will go far. Amen. Jump when God says to jump, and you will catch the move of the Spirit, which will take you miles further than you could ever go yourself. Amen. And he's finished up by telling us to learn lesson from the locusts. He said, locusts time their jump perfectly. So copy the locust example and stay tuned to the Spirit of God. Only move when you sense the breeze of the Spirit. Glory to God. I will move. Say after me, I will move. When I sense the move of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There is a, a window of opportunity to step out in faith. Your wings may not be big enough to go the distance. Perhaps you feel like you can only flap for two to five seconds. But you are not alone. Glory to God. Say, I am not alone. And I declare to you, you are not alone. Amen? God is with you. And his spirit will carry you as you jump when prompted by him. Amen? Amen. And Zerubbabel said that what God said to him, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Amen? Glory to God. Before I share two points with you, I just want to just bring out summary of what our pastor was trying to, uh, was communicating to us here. Amen? The first thing we should learn from this study is that obey God's voice and jump when you are prompted by the Holy Spirit. Amen? And the second is that like the locust, don't rely on your strength but on the wind of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Glory to God. So there is, there is a lesson of the importance of timing. Amen? Often we say, you know, we talk about timing. You know, wait, wait, wait. There are two types of timing. Amen? The first timing is God's timing. And the second timing is your timing. When God has said something to you, do it. Many a time we say that we are waiting on God when God is waiting on us. Amen? So we can see in this lesson, the, the locals, their time, and know when is the perfect time to jump. They, they weren't waiting forever. Amen? Glory to God. What do you think would have happened if they jumped at the wrong time? Amen? Glory to God. So timing is so important. You know, the, uh, the athletic start gone. When it should be gone, what, what do you do? If you go. If you go before, before it shoots, what happened? You're disqualified. Amen? And that's what happened in life. Sometimes we know we jump before God tells us. And what happened? We make a shipwreck. People make a shipwreck of their lives. But that's not our portion in Jesus' name. And another lesson we should learn there is that always remember that you are not alone. Amen? We are not alone. And help will always come when we call upon him. He that says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. And we should remember the testimony of Zerubbabel. It is not by power. It's not by might. It is by his spirit, says the Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You know, we're dealing with have faith in the power of God. 
Because our God has power. He created everything by the words of his mouth. That's power. He raised the dead. That's power. The grave could not hold him. That's power. Amen. He ascended unto heaven. Amen. That's power. And that power is being given to us. Amen. Because the anointed one and his anointing lives inside of us. But there are something that the enemy uses to hinder that power. And it's called unbelief. And that's one of the things I want us to look at. And after that, we look at how to make that power working for us every day. Glory to God. So can we look at um, Matthew 17 again? 17 from verse 14 to 21. New King James Version. And he says, And when they had come to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is epileptic and suffers severely, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. And look at Jesus' response. Then Jesus answered and, say, and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you, with you? Bring him to me. Verse 18. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and he came out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. 19. Then the, the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? Listen to Jesus' answer in verse 20. Very important. So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief. I mean, say that, because of your unbelief. Say it again, because of your unbelief. For, for assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Another translation say it will obey you, and nothing will be impossible for you. This word has come up several times already this morning. Nothing will be impossible for you. Amen. Because the anointed one and his anointing lives inside of us. Amen. And verse 21. And Jesus now said, However, this kind does not go out except by what? By prayer and fasting. Which kind? Verse 20. Jesus said to them, the reason why you could not cast out the demon was because of your unbelief. And this kind of unbelief does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Amen. One minister said that there is something that happened to the word contest. Amen. The word contest, when you remove test from it, it becomes what? A con. Amen. Many a time I've, ha I've had preachers say this and I've preached that too. That the reason why we pray and fast is because there are certain demons that, need to, that needed praying and fasting before you cast it out. But that's not what the scripture tells us here. As you can see, verse 19, Then the disciples came to Jesus privately 
and said, Why could we not cast it out? And Jesus answered them the reason why. Amen. In verse 20. So Jesus answered and said to them, Because of your unbelief. However, this kind of unbelief does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Often the reason why we get confused when we read something like that, like there is another place in the scripture where a man said to Jesus, I believe, help my unbelief. And some people say that, no, because he did not believe. No, he believed. The reason because there are four kinds of unbelief. I don't think I have time to teach it uh, in depth, but I will just say what they have, you know, um, quickly. Four kinds of, of, of unbelief. The first one is unbelief itself, which is hardness of heart. That whatever the scripture says, I'm not going to believe you. I do not believe God exists, which I used to say until I got born again uh, about 34 years ago. That kind of unbelief that the people of Jesus' town, you know, um, expressed to him. They didn't believe in him because we know him. They rejected him out of this, uh, despite. Despite him. Is he not the son of Joseph the carpenter? And his mom that we know, that rumor that he was born out of wedlock. And because of that, they do not want to believe him. That's the unbelief that is listed when you read the scriptures where he talk about those who will not inherit the kingdom of God. He said the fearful, the unbelieving. The second uh, type of unbelief is ignorance, which me, me and you have a, 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 uh, in certain area of the scriptures. That's why Hosea 4, 6 says that my people uh, perish for lack of knowledge. Any problem we have is a wisdom problem. It's a knowledge problem. Once we get the word of God, what word of God says on it, and stayed on it, and confess it, we get result and breakthrough in that area. The third, the third uh, type of unbelief is disbelief. That is the belief that we receive based on, re on wrong religious teaching. Jesus said that you've made the word of God non-effect due to your traditions. Like some people who believe that God puts sickness on people to teach them a lesson. Or to also that glory of God shall be seen. No. <laughs> if you do that, we as human beings, as parents, if you do that to our children, we will be arrested for child abuse. W wouldn't we? So how do we think that God will bring suffering to you to teach you a lesson or wisdom? No, the Bible tells us how God teaches us wisdom. Amen? And it's in, I think, uh, Timo, uh, 1 Timothy 3, 16. All scriptures are given by inspiration of God for teaching, for instruction, and all that. So God teaches us wisdom through his word. And then the fourth area or type of unbelief is what is in this text we read. It's called natural unbelief. Amen? So natural unbelief is that when you know the word of God, you believe the word of God. You know that by his stripes we were healed. And by his stripes we are healed. You've applied it, you pray, but the, you're still feeling the symptom. Or in this story, the enemy knows how to do a drama. I remember when I was young in Africa, I was, one of the things I was afraid of is snake. <laughs> but my elder brother was, he was fearless. 
He will go to the snake and use matches and matches the head. And then the snake will throw itself up in the air and I will run and my brother will stand there. He said, once the head is cut off, the, the snake is, is gone. And we know that Jesus has defeated the enemy for, for us, isn't he? And where is the enemy? Under our feet. Amen? Praise God. So what he did there was, you remember that the, 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 uh, the disciples has been sent out by Jesus already before this. He sent them out in uh, Matthew 10 from verse 7 to 8. You know, he said, as you go, preach the kingdom. Yeah? And this is the, the kingdom. Tell them what the kingdom is like. Heal the sick. Cast out the devil. Yeah? Raise the dead. And they went and they did all that. And after that, he sent them again to go and audition. He sent out the 70s. And they went, they did a lot of signs, miracles, and wonders. And they came back and they were testifying to Jesus. Wow, look at what we did. Even the demons, you know, obey us in your name. And Jesus looked at them and he said, that is beautiful, you know. Children, that is wonderful. But I want you to really glory in this. Amen? That your names are written in the Lamb Book of Life. Glory to God. Say after me, my name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. Amen? Glory to God. Yeah, so what the enemy did was, he did a drama. And that child start, you know, throwing himself and start convulsing. And because of that, he negates the disciples' faith. So that is, the, that is called natural unbelief. The enemy uses it on you and in me. And that's why there are many things we are praying for and we have not gotten breakthrough. Because... Because we are being distracted by the devil's drama. Amen. Say after me. From today, I will not be distracted by the enemy's manifestation, by the enemy's lies, by the symptoms in the name of Jesus. So I don't know what the pain in your body is. Jesus heals bodies. You might be feeling the symptom, but I tell you, that symptom is lying, on you, is lying to you. Amen? You are healed. You are whole in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. So we should be, not be ignorant of the enemy's devices. Amen? He uses unbelief, natural unbelief, to negate the power of God. But today it's been found out. Amen? Amen? And we'll never succumb to that anymore. Whatever. Whatever the, your body is telling you, whatever the, whatever the situation is, look beyond the situation and believe the word of God. And that situation will change in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And what is the, let's look at a way for us to enjoy this power every day. Every day. For, that, for the supernatural to become natural to us every day. Let's look at um, Proverbs chapter 3. From verse 1. Thank you. And he says there, My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. Amen. We should not forget our Father's law. We should not forget the word of God. Where should we put it? We should keep it in, in our heart. Once we keep the word of God in our heart, it will be, it will be impossible for us to disobey God. It will be impossible for us to do something contrary. Amen. That's why David penned in Psalm 119, I think verse 89. He said, your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. And even his son Solomon, in Proverbs 16 verse, uh, I think it's 6. He said that the, uh, by the fear of the Lord, say that with me. 
men depart from iniquity. That's why the enemy does not want the gospel or the Bible in schools or in our government premises. Because you know, if we read the word, if we know the word, and we store it in our hearts, there is no trial, there is no temptation we cannot overcome. Amen? And when we do that, look at the, look at the, uh, the benefit, verse 2. For length of days and life and peace, they will add to you. Glory to God. So God gave us his word for our benefit. He said, let, verse 3, let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck like an ornament. Write them on the table, on the tablet of your heart. Amen? You see the goodness of God. Amen? Before Apple. Amen? God already given us tablet. Amen? <laughs> Glory to God. Write them what? In the tablet of your? Glory to God. Isn't our God that he has sense of humor? Amen? <laughs> Glory to God. And verse 4. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. The Bible says without faith it is impossible to please God. That's why we are not ashamed to talk about our faith to talk about faith, to talk about Jesus. Amen? Glory to God. If you want to find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man, we should store the word of God in our heart. And now we are beginning to land. Verse 5. Trust in God releases the power of God. Amen? Say that with me. Trust in God releases the power of God. Amen. He said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. Verse 6. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. He said, in all your ways. Not in some of your ways. Amen. Say that with me. All. All. In all my ways. I will acknowledge God, and he will direct my path. Amen. I remember in 1990, you know, I felt like I'm getting old. And I began to think about marriage, you know. <laughs> and I began to pray and say, God, I want to acknowledge you in this area. And I saw the face of God. And God showed me who the person was. And I prayed for about a year before I summoned courage to go and speak to people who look at the, that area of things to make sure that you're not going to talk to a lady who is already engaged or married to somebody. So you go and share with them and, they, and they'll tell you that, you know, Sorry, that person is either engaged or is married. <laughs> and then when I went and told them, I thought that the person that God showed me already knew. And little did I know, she didn't know. <laughs> and I woke up to Linda one day and I, I said to her, sorry, God is leading me to you. And she said to me, sorry, that God who told you hasn't told me. <laughs> Amen. And I had to wait for two and a half years before she eventually heard from God. And then, you know, and, and here we are. Amen. So it is important. The reason why we have so much problem today, and having the kind of situation that unbelievers, those who do not know God have, is because we make decisions based on outward attraction. We make decisions without asking God. The Bible tells us that our God knows the end from the beginning, isn't it? 
and the all, and this love letter called the Bible is for our good. It's for our it, it's to better us. So when we ask him his opinion in every matter, he will surely help us in Jesus' name. In all your ways. Verse 7, he said, Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. And look at another benefit, verse 8. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Glory to God. And verse 9. And you know, all these things are not in isolation. Verse 9, so important. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits. Amen. We quote that scripture all the time. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. So God wants us to honor him, to show that we love him by giving him the first, by giving him our first fruits. Amen? So in our modern time, we call your tithes an offering. Amen? Giving your tithes, and tithe is 10%. Amen? Of, your, of all your what? First fruit of all your increase. Glory to God. And look at benefit. And it tells you the benefit that will follow it in verse 10. And that's where we stop. It says, so your bounds will be filled with plenty. And your vats will flow with new wine. Amen. So when we obey God in that area, we're giving him opportunity to bless us. He said, bring you the tithe into, the, into his house. So that there will be what? Meat in his house. And what will happen? He will open the windows of heaven, the heaven to pour you out a blessing. There will not be room enough to contain it. He will give you the knowledge of witting inv invention. He will keep you healthy. Amen? He's the one that gives us what? Strength to get wealth. Praise God. This is the way we know by obeying God with the word of God. And that's the way we experience the power of God and seeing the word of God working. Amen? By being obedient to his word. Glory to God. I want us to close by looking at Cain and Abel's offering. In, in Genesis 4, 3 to 5. Amen. Thank you. From three, he said, And in the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the land, the fruit of the ground. Four, And Abel brought of the firstborn of his flock and, and of the fat portions. What did Cain bring? He brought what? The firstborn. Or first fruit. As a farmer in Africa, your firstborn of any of your uh, flock is so important. If you're walking by sight, you will not give up that. Because they are the one that is older to bring forth to reproduce. Did you get that? So if you give that up, you have to wait for the other ones to grow to be able to reproduce. So in our modern time, what does that mean? You give God what he said you should bring. Don't hold on to it. Trust him and do what he asks you to do. So let's finish reading it. And Abel brought of the firstborn or the first fruits of his flock and of the fat, of the fat portions. 
And the Lord had respect and regard for Abel and for his offering. But for Cain and his offering, he had no respect or, or regard. So Cain was extremely angry and indignant, and he looked sad and depressed. Isn't that there in Hebrews eleven six That God is a rewarder of them that casually seek him. Is it? God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. What does it mean to be diligently seeking God? Consistently following the word of God. Whether the prices of uh, petrol or energy is going up, that should not be the condition to make you whether to, bring, whether to offer God that which belongs to him or not. Amen? Glory to God. So what does that mean, what I just read? In plain English, he says, Ken's, Ken's offering painted a picture that he was, not, he was not a sinful person, needing God's forgiveness. He approached God on the ground of personal effort and worthiness. So the implication is that instead of accepting God's approved way, can offer to, to God the fruits of the ground, which is already caused. Therefore, he offered the product of his own toil, the work of his own hands, and God was right to refuse it. So how does this apply to us today? This means we walk in Cain's disobedience when we approach God in our own moral goodness and righteousness. How are we saved? We are saved by grace through faith. Glory to God. It's not by the works of our righteousness. And it's even as born-again Christians, we are not saved by, the good, by our good works. Amen? We are not saved by the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of our born-again spirit that we manifest is a result and evidence that we are born again. If that evidence is not there, you are not born again. If, the, if, if love, peace, patience, and kindness, and gentleness, and goodness is not there and you are not manifesting it, you are not born again yet. You have religious experience. Amen? Glory to God. Because I, there, there was a time I used to think, you know, because of I'm doing all these things. You know, that's why I'm accepted before God and I was corrected by the Holy Spirit. No, that is evidence of your born again. Amen. Glory to God. So secondly, it means we are disobeying and distrusting God when we give him offering from our leftovers. Or even in the morning, you just wake up and you just rush off to work without spending time and giving the best part of you. And then when you come back, you're so tired and you say, oh God, bless me and my family, amen. And you go to bed. It means we're giving him the leftover. We are serving the God of Mammon all day, and spend no time with him. So God does not want us to give him what is left over after we've taken care of all our financial needs. So I pray that from this day, that we will not allow the enemy to distract us through unbelief. And from today, that we will obey the word of God. Amen? We will heed his word in our hearts so that we will not sin against him. 
So we, that from today, we'll continue to behold the Lamb of God. Amen. Because whatever we behold, we become. Father, we thank you. We bless you for your word. And Lord, I know that your word, that, oh God, that you have taught us this morning, that your, your children have heard, you're doing something in their heart right now. Father, oh God, that you will bring transformation. You will bring change. That from today onwards, we will give you our first fruits. We will give you our best. We will spend the best time of the day seeking you. Talking to you, O God. And before we sleep, that Father, O God, that what will be in our mind is not the business of the day, but you. We'll meditate upon you on our bed. Father, I thank you, O God, this morning because I see bodies being healed. Oh, Father, I cause depression. I cause every spirit of anxiety this morning. In the name of Jesus, I speak peace, O oh God. I speak wholeness upon your people. I speak transformation, O oh God. I speak change, the spirit of generosity, O oh God. Oh, we are, O oh God, we have the same spirit of faith, and therefore we speak. Oh, Father, O oh God, nothing is impossible with, oh, with him who believes. Oh, we are believers oh, in this place, O oh God. We bless you, God. We worship you. We thank you for your word. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to thank God in your own way. Just begin to thank him. Just begin to praise him. He's worthy of all our praise. There is none like him, O oh God. We magnify you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. I think we can spend uh, this time, we can use it to, yeah, to our tithes and offering. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. The Bible tells us that God loves cheerful givers. Amen? Amen. He's so faithful. Amen. Glory to God. I don't want to, you know, say more on, on about offering because that is already covered in the, in our message this morning. But I, um, there are three ways we give. Amen? So we give uh, online, if you go to www.fetlifecenter.com uh, slash uh, Harrogate, you can give that way. Another way for, for, for you to give and support what God is doing in this place is by um, the account details are on the screen. Amen. But uh, you, Faith Life Center Ministries instead of Faith Life Harrogate. Yeah, it's Faith Life Center Ministries. And then another way to give is uh, when we pass the basket, um, you know, you, if, you, if you still um, give by check or by cash, and you can give that way. Amen? And uh, if I will call upon, uh, pass, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Dr. Kamwa again, if she, if she doesn't mind, to pray on the offering. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Praise God. We thank you so much, Lord, for your word that has come forth this morning. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that has convicted, encouraged, and strengthened us on the inside, nourished our spirits, and renewed our minds. And Lord, even as the Apostle Paul said that when we have been ministered to his spiritual things, then we should minister in physical things. 
as we bring our offering this morning, Lord, we bring it with thanksgiving. We bring it grateful for how you have poured into us and nourished and nurtured us in the spirit and renewed our minds by your word. And so we bring these gifts, Lord, as a token of our gratitude and our appreciation for our pastors and for this opportunity, this place, this space, this beautiful assembly lord and so we pray that even as we present our offerings this morning that you will regard and receive us and our offerings today that you will take pleasure in what we bring to you that we will be blessed in our giving lord even as we seek to just show you how much we appreciate you so we thank you for your blessing upon our finances and upon the finances of this ministry and we thank you for the great and mighty work you will accomplish even from this place in jesus name amen thank you uh before um pastor linda come up to bring notices uh just to say thank you so much for I've been here uh, uh, this morning, and I welcome my brother uh, Namdi and Dr. Um, Kamwa, come all the way from Manchester to be with us to celebrate my sister's uh, birthday yesterday and stay behind, um, you know, to worship with us this morning. And also, uh, our wonderful sister Precious, uh, all the way from Doro. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. And our longtime friends, you know, uh, Brad Tubo, all the way from London. Uh, I, was, I was his best man when he got married uh, many years ago. And uh, our precious, precious uh, our brother uh, Kayode and sister Tinuke. Amen. All the way from London as well. Uh, we, you know, we welcome you. We make you welcome. Thank you so much for being here with us uh, this morning. And then uh, without further ado, I welcome my beloved wife. Pastor Linda uh, Ojeka to bring notices to us this morning. Amen. God is good. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. It's been an awesome worship. I mean, how many of you have sensed the presence of the Lord in this place? Amen. God is so faithful. So faithful. Um, just for the benefit of those who, um, who, who, who have joining us. Um, later in the service, just to remind you that we do have our Tuesday Bible study. Um, it's every Tuesday, 7.30 till 9 o'clock on Zoom. And we've been having a fantastic time. In fact, we actually go through the strengthening devotional, but we actually go in more detail and really connect with one another. So it's been um, an absolute amazing time in the Word. And then also we have our Faith Life Prayer, um, 6 a.m. in the morning, um, Tuesday, 6 a.m., Wednesday and Thursday is 8 a.m. in the evening, and Friday is 6 a.m. in the morning. It's open to everyone, people joining. Um, you know, we have people coming in from Tel uh, Tulsa and uh, joining us online from different places. So uh, it's actually open to everyone just to pray into, the mini uh, pray into what God is doing, uh, even the, the, um, the calling and the, 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 the mantle that God has placed upon Pastor Joel and Evie, really praying into that, um, the call of, you know, planting churches across the Northwest, um, it's been uh, it's been awesome. So you can join as the body. We are praying as the body of Christ and praying for the work that God is doing, even in different ministries across this country. And we know we're going to see revival. We're going to see the glory of God, you know, in our in our midst. In the name of Jesus, Amen. So it's been awesome. So just as my husband says, um, how many of you have had a birthday this week? Okay, uh, as we normally do. Okay, how many of you had any any, any birthday? Say, oh, oh, you have a birthday. Okay, so it is our tradition. Um, to sing happy birthday. So we're actually going to rise up on our feet and sing happy birthday to Pastor Benny. Amen. I know he's, uh, how many, is he, how old is he? 30? Is he 30? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is called the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. Let's sing happy sixth year birthday to pa Pastor Benny. Amen. Let's sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to, you will come now. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Pastor Benny. Ha ha. Happy birthday to you. Do you have anything to say? Thank you. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I love putting my husband on the spot if I wasn't surprised. So, yeah. Um, he hasn't recovered yet. He's still. He's still, <laughs> still, oh, still dead. He's still dead. <laughs> and, and, 
so awesome, so humbling. Okay. Thank you so much. Anyway, it's been awesome. Thank you so much for coming to church today. Have a wonderful time. We have actually got cake. There's birthday cake, I'm telling you. Ah, if you miss it, I'm, I'm sorry. Anyway, so there's tea and coffee um, to my left. And also, please remember those of you who are joining us, we just want to say thank you so much for visiting us for the first time here at Faith Life Harrogate. Please complete your new hair card, the green card on your seats. Please complete that and take that to the connect desk. And if you can turn around, Jocelyn is waving. Can you see Jocelyn? Woo, give Jocelyn a round of applause. So if you can take it to Jocelyn, she will hand you one of our lovely packs and, you know, just um, to say thank you so much for joining us. So have a wonderful week. Safe travels back home. We love you all and God bless. Thank you.